Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. This morning, first thing, two concepts that I want to cover, uh, and these are, are not advanced by any means. Um, one concept would be uh, thumbnails in HTML, and the other concept are image links. So two quick concepts today, and uh, let's get into it. So image links uh, are just that. Instead of putting text inside of your anchor tag, like normally you'd put the text for your link right here, uh, you put an image tag. And what that makes is exactly what an image link sounds like. Uh, a a clickable image and so a lot of times you see these as advertisements on websites um, and so you know you you uh, can rent if you will space on your web page uh, for advertisers to uh, bring traffic to their site and if your website has enough traffic uh, advertisers will even reach out to you and request this. Um, one of the, uh, well, there's an old story that I have. I'll, I'll, I'll save you the, uh, I'll save you the story. Um, there's like a story that I have in my mind of like a teenage, uh, young teenage girl that had so much traffic to her website, and this goes back many, many years ago. I'm not saving you the story. Um, this was back in the days of MySpace. And on MySpace, this young teenage girl made MySpace templates. And so you, if you remember MySpace, you could have like themes and templates. And she made girly MySpace templates. And it, as it turned out, this girl, this young girl, uh, got so much traffic to her, her website for girly MySpace templates that she had more traffic uh, at that time than Oprah Winfrey's website. So as you all know, Oprah Winfrey, you know, mega super celebrity. Um, and uh, this young girl became, uh, I forget the exact dollar amount, but a multi-millionaire um, because she started selling ads on her website to companies like AT&T and, and Sprint and basically cell phone companies. Um, and, you know, so there's a lot of money to be made should you have a lot of traffic to your site. And so, I don't know. Let's just say we've got this AT&T banner that... Uh, we can copy the image address. If you right click, copy image address, that should work. And you can kind of see they put that in the source of your image. As a reminder, the pound symbol is kind of like a dummy link. It doesn't really go anywhere. Um, so alt banner at and banner. and close the anchor tag. We can kind of format that. And this is an image link. And if I launch it, let's see, there you go. If I click it now, again, the click doesn't go anywhere. Um, www.att, I'm assuming att.com is the correct URL. Uh, HTTP colon slash slash. And there you go. Uh, we now have a an image link. Uh, anything else to say about this? Image tag is a self-closing tag. And that's how you do an image link. I guess the last thing worth saying, I kind of use the Emmet hotkey where I type the A greater than IMG and then I hit tab and all that did was it made a image tag as a child of the anchor tag which is exactly how you do image links so if you kind of watch kind of quickly that's exactly what I did a greater than image and there you go uh, you've got your markup 
templated for you. Um, now a thumbnail, well what is a thumbnail? A thumbnail is a small image that is clickable and opens a larger version of the image. And so uh, typical thumbnail that you see a lot um, are image galleries. Um, galleries. Okay. Um, we are going to make some nice image galleries. Turns out a lot of modern image galleries use a little bit of JavaScript. And so these early thumbnails for image galleries, um, they're pretty primitive and, and they remind you a lot of, these remind me a lot of how the web used to work uh, in that most modern image galleries today don't work like this. Uh, and so you'll see what I mean. Um, but it's kind of, uh, let's like learn in steps. And so this is the first small step to make an image gallery is to learn like a basic thumbnail. Oh, one last thing on the image links. Uh, it's always a good idea to put target blank here. And that way it just opens up in a new tab instead of navigating your tab away from your site uh, once that loads there. So just a little side note, this is always a good idea to keep the user on your site instead of navigating them somewhere else. Um, so for a thumbnail, uh, again, I'm just going to pull down uh, some sort of image and uh, doesn't really matter. So this is a nice image. And let's go ahead and download the free download. And by the way, that's a huge image, right? So 3,000 pixels wide, 4,000 pixels tall kind of thing. Um, so we already have our big image. And we'll need to create a small version of this image of which you could download the original and the small. Um, so let's just download the large. And again, I'm going to save this in the right folder, which is very important. We've covered that. Homework, I believe, this is chapter five. I'll go ahead and make an images folder. And we'll call this large lamp. And then I'll download the small version of that. And that's not really even that small, but smaller. And so again, the idea is that you have a clickable small image and then when you click it, it opens up the bigger version of that image. That's the idea of a thumbnail is to save the space on your page so that a user does not have to uh, uh, see the image in its full size unless they really want to. So we're going to kind of do the same thing here, uh, which is an image link. Um, and what you're, the image that we're going to see needs to be the small image. So the image source is going to be the small image. Now just to verify, I did save that in the right place. I've got the images folder. So of course now we have to do a subfolder from index, right? So index is in the root and we have to give the image source to say this is a subfolder. So the way we do that is with images slash smalllamp.jpg. Now what we link to, and again, this is this is the old way of doing it. We're gonna we're gonna actually give it a link instead of linking to another page. We're just gonna link it to the large image. So we're gonna actually link to the large lamp .jpg. So when you click the small lamp, it opens up the large lamp. 
and this is kind of the here's that's not really the small lamp uh, as far as it doesn't really look much smaller you can see that the image link works um, but what the user is seeing is the small lamp it's just not very small it's still big 640 by 960 it's still a, a large uh, and so what you might need to do is scale this down a little bit um, the actual image isn't that small is my point so the way to resize it there's a couple of things you could do you could download an even smaller image or you could just resize this down I'll just kind of quickly resize this down homework chapter 5 images and I like to just edit it with paint um, because paint really gives you a let's see open with paint As you can see even though it's called small lamp it's still a pretty big lamp and it maintains the aspect ratio so if I just do something like 100 by 150 there we go now we've got a small image and now you can see it's a small image and when you click it it opens up the big image again we're learning in small steps you know this is kind of like the first step of an image gallery it's very common in image galleries to have your markup structured like this a bunch of thumbnails and then what we'll learn to do is maybe use some JavaScript to just have like a central image that you could click uh, you click the small image and it, it pops the image up on the big image. Uh, so you have a bunch of small images, you click it, and it just kind of swaps out the big image with the small image that you click on. So yes? With some of those image gals also, like if you click on, like they'll have a group of like thumbnails and you click on one. Yes. And scroll through it. Is that kind That's of exactly like, what we're going to do. And there's going to be like different like little visual transitions. They blow up and they shrink down. And there's all sorts of fun things you could do when you, you learn a little bit of animations and JavaScript. And, uh, does yeah. it also, I, cause I, I didn't notice there's an eye contact. Is that, like, I guess that also kind of work the same way for uh, like thumbnails or is it kind of used a little differently? So the question is about the icon tag. So let's look at the icon tag. So if we remember some of these resources here. I did see it there on the W3 schools. Yeah, so HTML reference. Um, are you thinking of like a .ico? No, no it was an actual, like an actual, an actual icon tag. Okay, so let's. Unless it's now using more. Um, maybe if you give me the link, I can look into it a little bit. No, I mean that's that's the actual page that I. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Got it. So. Couple of different concepts here. Um, we do, we do, we use a little bit of all of these things. Um, font awesome we'll use in this class. Um, but it's a, uh, I'll save that for a different lecture. Uh, font awesome, uh, takes icons and makes them a font so that you can make them bigger and give them colors and all these kinds of things. Uh, but basically you get all of these icons um, uh, that you know your social media icons and all of these kind of common icons that you might see out on the web and, and it turns them into fonts so they're very uh, just like you can change a font in a million ways you could change all of these icons okay. the same way. I saw that I tag and like that's Tag. Yeah, so, well, the I tag is italic. It's an, it's oh. an old italic tag. Yeah, so, so that, nowadays we just use the emphasize tag instead of I. So, yeah, you saw I and thought icon, but it was the old italics tag. And then the way that they actually have these icons is they add these classes to an I tag, and that actually makes whatever uh, icon you want to show up, this is like a Band-Aid uh, 
icon, this is a cat icon, a dragon icon, whatever. Um, and so there, there you can kind of see those font icons. So yeah, we'll do a little bit with font, font awesome. Okay, we'll go ahead and stop the recording there with those two quick demos.